Hi friends, Pastor Evan here. Today we are beginning a new series looking at the miracles of Jesus through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are 37 miracles in total listed in those books, and we're going to speak on many of those on our Sunday services, uh, but the miracles we can't get to, uh, just because of time, we're going to be walking through one a day, Monday through Thursday, throughout this series. And so I hope you'll stick with us and, and, and walk through the Gospels with us as we look at the ways that Jesus encountered people's lives. You know, we can learn a lot from the ways that Jesus responded to pain. We can learn a lot from the ways that Jesus uh, went out of his way to spend his time. And by the way, his time was very valuable. He didn't have a lot of it in his ministry to um, do, you know, these these little small things like start the church and, uh, you know, save the world and all the things that Jesus accomplished through his ministry. Um, it probably would have been tempting for him to see the problems of the people as too insignificant for his time and attention. But we'll see again and again the ways that Jesus um, refused to be too hurried and refused to be too important um, to encounter hurting people and to perform miracles and to heal and to love and to express the, the, the Father's compassion uh, for the people around him. And so these are inspiring stories. They're beautiful stories. And I think we can learn a lot from them. And so I want to really very briefly here talk through um, one of the miracles that Jesus performs in John chapter 4. Um, he's in Cana of Galilee. And uh, what happens is an official there, probably a Gentile most likely, uh, finds out that Jesus is in town. This rabbi is in town. And so he goes to him um, because the the Gentile official's son is sick. He's dying. And in verse 49 of John 4, the official says to Jesus, sir, come down before my child dies. He wants Jesus to show up to, to go with him to his house where his son is dying and to heal him. And Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. The man believed this word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. And as he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked them the hour which he began to get better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. And the father knew that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he himself believed in all his household. Um, what I take from this story, what I'm encouraged by today, is that uh, the faith of the father is what heals the son. This child has no awareness that Jesus is, is working on his behalf. Uh, the son has no awareness that the father is, is desperately seeking out answers and um, you know a solution to help uh, bring the son back from the edge. And, and yet all this is happening outside of the efforts or the struggle of the son himself. Um, I'm encouraged by that because that means faith is transferable. It means that, that me as a dad, the, the, the faith I have actually can benefit my children. When I pray, God hears me on behalf of those I love. And I think back to the time when, when several years ago and my, my wife was fighting cancer and the amount of prayer and support that came around us um, from people that, that really probably felt a little helpless. I don't know, have you been there where someone you love is sick? Uh, and you feel helpless to do anything about it? Well, according to this, our faith and our prayers for those that we love actually have effect. Um, that when we pray, that when we um, ask Jesus to come near, um, that he acts on our behalf for those that we love. Um, and that's one of the principles of, of divine intervention in the world, is that our prayers for others can actually affect the actions of God. I mean, think about that. Your prayer today can actually affect the actions of Almighty God. That means that God will do things tomorrow because we pray today that he may not have done if we hadn't prayed. That's a huge theological and uh, statement. You know, it has huge implications, but it should inspire us. Um, we can't give up praying for those that we love. We can't give up seeking God to, to intervene and act on behalf of those that are in need today, in need of a miracle, in need of healing, in need uh, of an encounter with Jesus. The same Jesus that I, I, I'm reading about here today um, is present in 2020, in this crazy year, when nothing is as it was expected, 
Jesus is present and Jesus is still doing the same things today as he was so many years ago. God bless you. Love you. Hope you're staying encouraged today and we'll see you tomorrow for another miracle.